يا الله um, is the voice clear إن شاء الله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد الأم والمهدين وسلم تسليما uh, okay so إن شاء الله we will start now uh, with the program in the name of Allah the abundantly merciful the intensely merciful praise be to Allah the Lord of the words May Allah send his blessings upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, the Imams and Mahdi's. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters. Inshallah, today I'll speak about dua or supplication. I chose this topic because it is one of the important bones or bridges between the creation and the creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran say what would my Lord care for you if not for your supplication another verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and your Lord says call upon me and I'll respond to you indeed those who disdain my worship will enter hell rendered contemptible so in those holy verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sends an invitation he lends a hand to his creation to come back to him. And how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do this? He asks us through dua and supplication. Allah says, Say, what would my Lord care for you if not for your supplication? Allah says that he would not care for us if we haven't supplicated to him. Why? Why is it important to supplicate to Allah? Because who does not supplicate to Allah, it means he or she is capable of everything. Means he or she does not need Allah. Because when you supplicate, when you supplicate, it means you need Allah. So if you disdain supplication, it means you have cut this bond between you and your Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now let each and every one of you think within himself. Did you get anything good except from Allah? Is the breath we are breathing, is the food we are eating, is the position we are in today, everything, just think about everything that is happening, every blessing you are getting. Are you getting it from anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? وَإِن تَعَدُّوا نَعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا And if you should count the favor of Allah, you could not enumerate them. In the book of the wilderness or the path to Allah, Imam Ahmad al-Hasan salam he says, Supplicate to Allah in ease and in hardship, and in every need, whether large and small. And do not consider something to be too small for you to ask from Allah. And do not consider something to be too large for you to request from Allah. As you never achieved good except from Allah, and no one has pushed evil away from you except Allah. It was narrated that Allah inspired to Musa alayhi salam, O Moses, ask me for the salt in your butter, and for the lace on your shoes, and for the feet of your animal. SubhanAllah, look at the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Musa alayhi salam, and he is a prophet from Allah. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching Musa. He is teaching him to make dua in every small thing, even the salt in your butter, even the lace on your shoes. These are very insignificant matter is when we look at it but do we actually get the salt in our food from any blessing other than the blessings of Allah if we are getting the feed of our animals from anyone except from Allah is the breath we are getting is it from anyone other than Allah so Imam says supplicate to Allah in ease and in hardship in every need whether large and small Nothing is too small for you to request from Allah. Nothing is too large for you to request from Allah. Because nothing good happens to you except from Allah. And no one pushes evil away from you except from Allah. This is also a dua from Imam Ali alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He cannot be limited with an attribute. And His giving has no end. It rather descends in proportions because our word is limited. 
So Imam Ahmed Al Hassan Ali Salam he says, so ask Allah whatever you want from the good of this world and the hereafter, which has the good of your religion and the satisfaction of your Lord. And do not miss the dua in Al Sahif Al Sajadiyya, for it is the Psalms of the family of Muhammad peace be upon them, and especially the dua of Kumail on the evenings of Fridays, and the dua of Abu Hamza Al Thumali, and the Munajat of Shaban. And always supplicate to Allah in every situation. Look how Imam Ahmed Al Hassan he is trying to teach us how we strengthen our bond with Allah. He says always supplicate to Allah in every situation, in work and in free time, in night and in day. And especially after the obligatory prayer, before you leave your position of prayer. And praise Muhammad and the family of Muhammad often. And do not abandon the prostration of gratitude after each prayer and after each blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon you and after each harm that he pushes away from you. And the way to do it is that you prostrate and then place your right cheek on the ground and then the left cheek then back to prostration. And the least to be said in it is shukran lillah. All thanks to Allah three times and the best is 100 times. So this is the end of the words of Imam Ali Salam from the book of uh, the wilderness or the path to Allah. From the aforementioned, we see that making dua is for every small and big matter that happens in our life. Now let's look at this topic of dua from, let's say, a different tie or from this story I'll be telling you, inshallah. One day, Sheikh Ala Asanam, he is one of the companions of Imam Ahmed al Hassan, he told the Imam that he saw a vision, ru'ya, dream. And this vision, it made him sad. It was something that concerns Sheikh Ala Salam, and it did not seem that it was a good tidings to him. And he said at the end of telling the vision to Imam, he said, and Allah knows best my pain now. He was in pain because of what he saw in the vision. So the Imam السلام, said to him, and why are you sad? I shall tell you something now. Does not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, call upon me, id'uni? The beginning of the human being perhaps is in dua, supplication to Allah. The beginning of the human being perhaps in dua. As for those who know the truth, see the Imam here is showing us two ranks the beginning of the human being and the rank of those who know the truth. He says that the beginning of the human being perhaps is in dua. As for those who know the truth, they cannot say, give me, cure me, do this for me. I want this, I don't want that. They cannot. They would only stand at the door of Allah, hoping, praying that Allah has preference on them and uses them in whatever he subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. Until when are we going to remain looking towards ourselves? By Allah, if He subhanahu wa ta'ala used me from the beginning of time until its end, then He made me enter into hellfire, He would have been kind to me. And what kindness is greater than Allah using me, even if for some time? We are supposed not to care except for one thing, and that is to raise from our black page this I, ego, which almost never separates from us. Those were the words of Imam Ahmed al Hassan from the book with the Virtue Seventh, the volume one. Okay, so now we have two sayings from Imam. One time the Imam says, Make dua for Allah in everything. Another time, Imam says that asking Allah to give, cure, to do this and that for us is part of turning towards our ego. So what are we supposed to make dua for? This is basically the topic of today's conference, inshallah. What are we supposed to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for? Was there a contradiction between the two sayings of Imam? Of course not. I read basically the words of Imam Ahmed al-Hassan as he replied to this matter. 
it is better that we quote the words of the teacher himself. Imam Ali Salam he replied to this. He said, if you make dua from your own, then there are two matters here. Firstly, that you are singing each time you make dua, I, Anna, and that are turning toward yourself. This is the first thing. When you are singing each time, when you are making dua from your own, firstly you are singing each time you make dua, I, I want this, I want that. Secondly, that you are saying in, e in every request, I know, I understand, I know where the benefit is. Meaning that you are the one who analyzes. You have analyzed that the benefit is in such and such happens to you. And then you ask Allah that he fulfills for you what you have analyzed. So in brief, you are saying to Allah, I know better than you where the benefit is. And I am more knowledgeable than you. Because you have already determined it. You have determined where the benefit is. And you just asked him to fulfill it. You're saying to him, do such and such for me. Meaning you have analyzed that such and such is the truth. And in it shall be the benefit in the word and the benefit in the hereafter. But for example, in Allah saying to his servant, say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. وَقُلْ رَبِّي زِدْنِي عِلْمًا he who analyzed the interest, the benefit of increasing in knowledge? Allah. Allah is the one who analyzed the benefit because he mentioned this in the Quran. Why are you requesting it? You're requesting it because he told you to request that. He said in the Quran, say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. So in all conditions, it is not just words, rather it is actions, meaning we understand it when we are in it not when we're outside of it speaking about it so subhanallah uh, imam alayhi salam inshallah his answer is enough he is showing us the different ranks in making dua he explained that in the beginning of the human being's journey towards allah is perhaps in dua in supplication to allah but those who know the truth they will not say, give me, cure me, etc. They would only stand at the door of Allah hoping that Allah has preference on them and uses them in whatever he was. This clarification from Imam reminds us of the story of Musa with the virtuous servant. Uh, of course, the story of Moses with the virtuous servant is long and we are not here uh, going to mention it. But let's take the lesson from the story. The virtuous servant, he wanted to tell Musa that fighting the eye is endless. There are endless ranks in fighting the eye. Just as the grace of Allah is innumerable, and just as the ranks that humans can reach are innumerable. In the end, the virtuous servant, he advised Musa eloquently. So he gradually took him through the ranks of monotheism ranks of monotheism ranks of making dua there are ranks it's not like it is wrong to do such and such dua but there are ranks in making dua making dua in a rank of oh god do such and such for me is not at the same rank of making the dua that allah asks you to do or ahl bayt have made the dua so what are the ranks that the virtuous servant told Musa and the virtuous servant is among us today? So he's teaching us the ranks of monotheism just as he taught Musa. The first rank was I. As for the ship, it belonged to poor people who worked in the sea. So I wanted I. The first rank was I. And the second was we. As in the Quran said, as for the young man, his parents were believers, so he feared that he would tire them in tyranny and disbelief. So we wanted, we wanted. And the third was he. 
Allah says in the Quran, as for the wallet belonged to two young male orphans in the city, and there was a treasure beneath it, which has theirs, which was theirs, and their father was a good man, so your Lord wanted, your Lord wanted, and I did not do it by my own command. So the third rank was he, your Lord. And although it was by the command of Allah, it consecutively showed disbelief to a certain level, I and not he. And it showed shirk to a certain level, I and he. And it showed monotheism, he only. Three ranks. So it's a matter of ranks. The beginning of human beings is to make dua to Allah to fulfill his needs. Imam Ali salam he even uh, gave an advice. It's a very beautiful advice in raising our children. Listen to this uh, advice from Imam Ali salam in raising our children. And he's the best, the best raiser. He says, encourage the child to pray to rak'ah on his own, in which he makes dua to fulfill a certain need. And when he experiences the fulfillment of his need, his bond with Allah will be strengthened and Iman, belief, will be established firmly in his heart, bit by bit. Imam Ali salam, he is telling us about the beginning of the human being's bond with Allah. He says, encourage your child, let your child experience the love of Allah. Let your child experience Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's might by fulfillment of his need. The child does not understand the you know the ranks of monotheism, but he's on his fitra. The child is too small. He uh, you know he digests and he understands what he sees in front of him. So for example if a child wants a toy or he lost something and he knew that by losing this something he will be punished what you will do to him how what you will advise your child tell him pray to rak'a on his own and make dua to allah to fulfill your need i told this to one of the children and when they did it they said subhanallah even though they were small but you can see that as if they had this bond with Allah. Another time, I did not tell this child. This child, by her own, she went and asked Allah. She prayed to Rak'a, she made dua to Allah, and subhanAllah, she did find the thing that she has lost. She did uh, fulfill the need she, that she had. This way, this child, bit by bit, the Iman belief will be established firmly in his heart. It is not only the matter of children, even we. There are things that we want. So in the beginning, yes, ask Allah. See how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is near you. You will experience the love of Allah. You will experience the closeness of Allah. But then you will find that uh, or you will reach a rank where you say, Allah knows best. Why do I ask Allah to fulfill this and this for me? Maybe if I'm asking for this thing, it is not good for me. Who knows what is good? Do I know what is good? Or does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is good for me? So, in all cases, we leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, you know, fulfill whatever he subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. So, the story of Musa with the virtuous servant, it has a lot of lessons for every believer who is, uh, you know, in the journey of reaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's a matter of ranks. The beginning of human being is to make dua to Allah to fulfill his needs. But when the believer reaches to a higher rank, a rank which he does not turn towards himself, a rank which all he wants to do is obey Allah in everything and do everything that Allah asks him to do. He would work day and night and every be every breath he gives it to Allah. This believer, do you think he will ask Allah from his own or that he will turn towards Allah and make the dua that Allah asked him to, such as those mentioned by Ahlul Bayt 
And why is he doing those dua? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks him to. So he's leaving it all to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, this matter, it was um, discussed in the Arabic Patrick room. And the same question was, uh, you know, asked. So Sheikh Nadam al-Uqayli, and he is one of the uh, representatives of Imam Ahmed al-Hassan in the office of Najaf. He said the dua, if it was to Allah, then it does not have ego, does not have ana. Like for example, if you ask Allah to have a virtuous son and to have a wali from the awliya of Allah, this dua is for Allah, it is not for your own. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran. For example, sometimes we ask Allah something that we think it is good, but in fact, it has uh, a consequence on us. For example, if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you a high rank, to be from the close ones, from the muqarrabeen, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He accepts your dua, but you have to know that reaching the rank of being from the close ones, it requires you to experience certain matters that none other than you will experience because they did not ask for it. Those matters, they are exams, they are tests in this world. So when you fall into a problem and you say, SubhanAllah, why am I in this ibtila? Why am I in this affliction? Okay, didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer your previous request? You ask Allah to be from the close ones. Then you have to experience those things so that you will experience sabr, to have patience, and to reach the rank of the close ones. That's why the advice of Sayyid Ahmed al Hassan alayhi salam, and this I uh, quote to you from Sheikh Ala al Salam, he says the advice of Imam Ahmed al Hassan alayhi salam always to his Ansar. Do not ask for anything and do not choose anything and to leave everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to choose for them. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad al-imma wa al-mahdeen wa sallam taslima.